Today, let's figure out the area of this curved rectangle. So it looks like this right here. And then if you guys remember my video on the surface area of a solid of revolution, this is just a part of the cone that I showed you earlier. I'm going to cut it off for you guys right here. This is this shape. And then I'm going to open it. And as we all know, this right here is not rectangle. But in fact, the area of this behaves like a rectangle. It's just equal to L times W. And in fact, once we get into calculus 3, once we talk about how to change from a rectangular coordinate system to the polar system, this thing will show up again. So we are going to see how to derive a formula. First, this right here comes from a circle. It's just that we have a sector. So this right here is the center of the circle. And then we just want to subtract this one, right? Now, let's go ahead and just do some labeling. This right here is the radius of the big circle, but I'm going to call this radius here R1. And then I will call this right here R2. So R1 is bigger than R2. And I'm going to call this angle theta. Now, I'm going to do a quick review with you guys. When we have a circle, if we have, let's say, a radius right here and then an angle here, there are two things that we need to know. The first thing is, how long is this arc? I will call this little s. Well, little s right here is just going to be a portion of the circumference. Well, what portion is it? We have theta, and the whole circle is 2 pi radian, right? So we just have to do theta over 2 pi. This portion of the circumference and the circumference of the whole circle is 2 pi r so you see 2 pi 2 pi cancel so s equals just r times theta so that's the first thing that we need to know and then the second thing is i would like to know the area of the sector again it's the same idea i'm just going to say here is the area of the sector It's a portion of the whole circle, and the portion is precisely theta over 2 pi. And then the whole circle has the area pi r squared. Here the pi and pi cancel, and I'm just going to write it as area of the sector equals 1 half, and then r squared times theta. So that's the other thing that we need to know. All right, let's come to here. Firstly, I want the area of this curved rectangle. And the reason I call this a rectangle is because the area of this behaves like a rectangle. Have a look. It's just going to be the big one minus the smaller one, right? So the area here is just going to give us one half, yeah? And then the outer radius is R1. So we just have to do R1 and then square that times the angle theta. And of course, we have to subtract this part. This part has R2 radius. So it's just minus 1 half R2 squared theta, just like that. Now, I'm just going to factor out the 1 half theta. So this becomes 1 half theta and then we have r1 squared minus r2 squared but what's this this is just a difference of two squares so we can factor it and we get r1 minus r2 times r1 plus r2 very nice huh now here's the magic i'm going to pair this and this up together have a look i'm going to write the s r1 plus r2 over 2 and then times the angle theta okay and then we are going to multiply by r1 minus r2 now what is this though this right here is just the average of r1 and r2 right so here is r1 here's r2 the average it's just right in the middle, somewhere here, yeah? It's just the middle. And if you multiply that by theta, that will give you 
this arc, isn't it? It's the middle arc between them. And for that blue arc, I'm going to call that L. So this part is just going to give us L. And then, what's R1 minus R2 here? Well, R1 is the whole thing, R2 is this. So R1 minus R2 is just this width right here. So I'll call this W. <laughs> so as you can see, all we have is just length times width. This width times the middle length, which is just the average of the R length of the outer one, also the inner one. Just like that. So doesn't this behave like a rectangle? Length times width. Really cool, huh? Now I want to give you a quick example of where we can use the idea in a calculus 3 class. Let's take a look at how we can take care of a double integral like this. One of the ways to do it is we are going to convert this from the rectangular system to the polar system. And to do so, we can use the usual conversion x equals r times cosine theta and then y equals r times sine theta. And of course, we can put this and that into the x and y here. But the question is, how do we take care of the dx dy? One of the ways is you can do the so-called Jacobian. You can put this in the matrix and then take the derivative. And I have done a video on that. You guys can go check that out. But let's take a look at this from a geometric point of view. This right here, dx dy in a rectangular coordinate system, dx is just a small change in the x value, but I have to draw it big so we cannot see it, but it's technically really small. And then likewise, dy is the small change in the y value. So dx dy is this little rectangle that we have. And I will label that as dA, a small change in the area. And the idea of a double integral is, here is your area region, like a base, and then the function is what you have built on top of it. And usually this computes a value of that solid. Now, let's see. Once we do the conversion, what will the dA be though? Have a look. Let's say we have a point right here. In the rectangular system, we go up and down, left, right. But in the polar system, it's all about rotation and then also extension or like maybe go back to the origin, right? So if you have this point, let's say we have a change of R. Let's say from here to here is R. And then change of R will be, let's just say we have a small extension like this. And again, this is meant to be very small, but I just had to draw it big so we can all see it. This right here will be the R. And then we are going to just do a smooth rotation. So that will be the change of angle. I will call that d theta. And then we will get to somewhere here. So you can see, we will get something like this. What's this? Yes, exactly like what we saw earlier, right? Well, if we can find the area of this, that will give us the small change in the area. And how do we do it? Yes, just like what we did earlier. We have the width right here already, that's great. Now, we will need the length of this arc. And that's what though? It's just a small circular arc. We will need to know the distance from here to here, that's just r. And I know we have to go to here, but check this out. dr is supposed to be very small. So from here to here, it's just r as well, right? It's technically just r. It doesn't matter, it's very small. So the radius just r, we just have to multiply that by the angle, which is d theta. So ladies and gentlemen, in this case, we can see that we just have to multiply r d theta. That's the length from here to here. And then the width, which is dr. And that will be the change of area in the polar world. So here's the key. When you see dx dy, if you want to use polar to help you out to take care of that double integral, make sure you change this to what? r, and usually write down dr afterward, and then d theta. And if you want to see an example, of course, you should definitely check out the most classic integral 
that requires this method, the Gaussian integral. Check it out for here. But that's it. Don't forget the R.